Hey everyone! Today I wanted to take a look at this Parallax Propeller Quick Start Board. So I picked this thing up at a Radio Shack of all places, like five years ago. So these things have been out for a while. And the main thing that really makes these boards different from, say, an Arduino is their concurrency model. This little propeller chip actually has eight cores. So your code can basically do eight different things at the same time. Now, you might think that this is interesting for performance reasons, and it is because maybe you can parallelize your code and have it use all eight cores at the same time. But to me, this is mostly interesting for convenience reasons. Being able to do eight different things at the same time in some ways simplifies your code. Let's say you wanted to blink eight different LEDs. And there are eight different surface mount LEDs on this board. With a single core, uh, if you wanted to blink them all at the same rate, that's pretty easy to do. It's kind of like blinking one LED. But when you want to blink them all at varying rates, it starts to complicate your code. You've got to somehow find a way to, you know, multiplex the logic to get all the different LEDs to blink at different rates. Especially if the rates don't all have the same common denominator where it's harder to, you know, do the multiplexing. Or if they're determined at runtime, maybe from a photoresistor or a potentiometer. So that feature definitely makes this board stand out. So this is the actual PAX32A microcontroller. It just rolls right off the tongue. <laughs> this is the brains of the board. In fact, this board is actually more of a development or prototyping board for this microcontroller. They sell these in isolation or on smaller boards that don't have all of these peripherals. But a board like this is definitely more approachable if you're just getting into programming this microcontroller. Speaking of programming, you load your code onto it from this USB mini port which can also supply power to the board. Another way to power it is through pin 40 right here. Uh, this pin can take anywhere between 4 volts and 9 volts DC. And then the pin directly below that, pin 39, is ground. So I do like that they put them right here on the end and that they put them next to each other. The next few columns of pins are special purpose pins, uh, things like serial and I2C for communication. But this first 28 pins are all general purpose, which is actually a pretty decent amount for a board like this. And all of them map directly to these through hole ports directly under the header to the corresponding pin. So if you did want to solder something to this board, you can do it here and still have access to these, uh, the female headers above. And then there are just eight surface mounted LEDs down here and then eight resistive touch pads, which you can turn these into buttons if you wanted to. Okay. So, Let's write some code for this thing. And the easiest way to do that I've found is with this simple IDE. You can get it from parallax.com from their website. Uh, it's based on GCC. It's free. And if you're familiar with the Arduino IDE, it's a similar concept. And the program that I want to write for it is going to be a binary counter or a binary clock that's going to show on these eight onboard LEDs, it's going to show a counter where the bits of the counter are going to correspond to one of the LEDs in terms of 0 and 1 being on and off. So you get to see the counting in an LED display, which is kind of neat. And it's easy. It's a good example program. So the first thing I'll do is include this propeller.h header. That contains some uh, macros that we need to work with the propeller uh, microprocessor. And then in the main function, I'm just going to assign 
or I'm going to declare this unsigned character variable named count, and I'm going to set it to zero. This is going to hold the count, and since it's an unsigned character, it's 8 bits, and each one of those bits is going to map to a corresponding LED. So as this counter increases, the bits of the counter are going to be displayed on these LEDs. So then there's this dir a integer, and this is going to specify the direction of the pin. So for every pin, there's a bit in this integer. And if that bit is set to zero, then that pin is going to be an input bit, or an input pin, and that's the default state. But if you set the pin to one, then it's going to become an output pin. And so the onboard LEDs are pins 16 through 23. So we need to set bits 16 through 23 in this integer to 1 in order to make them output pins on the board. So this value in hex means the first 8 bits are going to be 0 because 2 characters in hex represents a byte and there's 8 bits in a byte. So eight zeros followed by another eight zeros, and that covers the first uh, 16 pins. Then we're going to have eight ones, because FF, of course, is 255 in hex, and that means eight ones. So this does what we want to do. This sets the pins that correspond to these LEDs uh, are the bits that correspond to these LED pins to one, making all of these outputs so we can light up the LEDs. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm assigning it with an OR equals here because if there were any bits set on this dir a integer before, um, this won't overwrite them. It'll just set the ones that we want to set and leave the rest of them alone, basically. Uh, then I'm starting a loop forever. Uh, if you're familiar with C, while one basically means do this forever. And then the out A integer is kind of like the dir A, but the bits in this integer correspond to the state of that pin. So if a particular bit in this integer is a zero, then it's going to be a low signal on that pin. If you set that bit to a one, then it's going to send a high signal on that pin. So to light up one of these LEDs, we have to set a corresponding bit to 1. Now that's convenient for our counter because we're going to display a 1 to 1 correlation between those bits and these pins. And when I do this little shift to the left by 16 bits here, I'm aligning this counter to be these bits in this out A integer. So 16 bits to the left I'm going to basically be placing the bits of this counter into the output. And here I'm doing a direct assignment instead of an OR equals or something because um, it saves me from doing some bit magic to basically reset the state of all those bits every time. It does mean that if there were other code running in this program that were using the out A integer, we'd be overriding whatever they were doing, which would be bad. And since this board does support parallelism, you do have to be a little bit more careful about that. In this case, it doesn't matter. This example, pretty basic. So then this next line essentially is a delay, and I'll try to explain this. This C and T macro represents the current time that the, the board is executed when it reaches this instruction. And this clock frequency macro represents the number of ticks basically per second. So this is the current tick, this is the number of ticks per second, this thing is going to wait until whatever value we supply it. So by saying I want the current tick plus the number of ticks that there are in a second, I'm going to wait until that tick. All we're saying here basically is wait one second. I know it looks like a complicated way to do it, there are easier way, ways to do it if you include another header. There's a simple IDE header that gives you a pause function that's a lot like the delay from an Arduino. But in this case, I'm just using the raw macros from the propeller header. 
seems complicated. It's not really. This is somewhat easy to work with. Uh, anyway, this waits for a second. Then we're going to increment that counter and then start the loop again. So now the counter is plus one. The bits have changed. So we're going to reset this output integer that's going to correspond to the LEDs. And we're going to do that forever. And eventually this counter is going to overflow. Once it gets to 255, the next increment is going to push it back around to zero. So it's going to loop back around, reset all the LEDs, and then start the counter again. That's fine. In this case, that's the behavior we want. I want the counter to just keep going after it overflows. So all I have to do now is plug in this board on this computer, uh, the USB port is going to be this device, TTY USB 0. I already know that. It might be different on your computer. It also depends if you're using like Windows or Linux. I'm on Linux here. Um, and then there are two ways to do it. You can actually hit this button, which is going to load it into the RAM of this chip, and then run it. So you'll get to see it, and this is a faster way to load it. Now if you hit this button, it's going to load it into the EEPROM of the chip, or the EEPROM, and that means that you can actually pull the plug on this, you can power it down, but it's still loaded onto the chip. So when you power it back up, this is the code that's going to run. This is what I'm going to do because I'll show you how to basically disconnect this thing and then run it later. So there, it's all loaded on, and I'm going to switch to a camera so you can see this run. Okay, so here I've got the board with the code already loaded onto it. And I'm just going to plug in, I've got just this 9-volt battery attached to a little uh, connector so I have access to the wires. I'm going to plug in the ground first into pin 39. And then the voltage in into pin 40, and you see this power LED light up, and now it's counting. So this is the least significant bit. This is going to be like, you know, the ones digit, and then the twos digit, and then the fours digit, and the eights digit, so on. And you can see a binary counter. It's basically a binary clock. And when it finally gets all the way to the 8, when all of them light up the end of the counter, it'll wrap back around and all of them will be 0 and then it'll start the counter all, all over again. So since it counts uh, 1 every second, you've got 256 seconds, so it's like 4 minutes and something. So yeah, pretty cool. And you see, I'm powering it from a battery here. But if I take this out, I can plug in this USB cord, which is plugged into my laptop. And that'll also power it. That example program definitely doesn't do it any justice as far as the parallelism goes, but I wanted something simple enough to be able to explain in this video, and everybody likes blinky LEDs. I mean, come on. Let me know if you're interested in seeing more advanced programming with these, because I'd be happy to do a more in-depth video. So now let's get on to the pros and the cons. The pros. It has a good development environment. The simple IDE program is easy to use. It works well, just like you'd expect. Um, it has plenty of general purpose pins and COM pins for most of the common interfaces. It has these onboard LEDs, eight of them, which is pretty good for a board like this. Uh, and the resistive touch buttons are a nice feature as well. It has eight cores, which is probably the most interesting thing about this chip, to be honest. It's definitely neat. The cons. The main con, and really my only complaint, is 
The documentation is pretty sparse, and finding examples online can be difficult. This is in contrast to something like the Arduino, where pretty much any project you can imagine, somebody else has already done something similar, and you can find just tons of examples online to learn from. That's not the case for the propeller. You'll probably need to do some digging whenever you start a project. So I wouldn't really rec recommend it for beginners, but if you have experience with similar boards and you want to utilize these parallel features, go for it. Well, that's it for this video. Um, let me know in the comments if you're interested in seeing more of these boards or more development boards like this. And until next time, bye!